all writers have their challenges, right? But there's one specific challenge that can often result in the rider, the horse, the trainer, everybody involved just becoming so frustrated with the whole situation. And that's a swinging lower leg, okay? It seems to just set off this chain reaction where everybody is like, okay, let's secure the leg. And yet securing the leg is often easier said than done. That's what I want to talk about today, how you can secure a swinging lower leg. Okay, let's dive in. Hey there, and welcome to the Daily Strides podcast. My name is Lorna Leeson. I'm an equestrian trainer and coach, and I work with riders all over the world, helping them to have better conversations with their horses. I specifically love training riders who are working alone without a trainer or coach. So if that's you, you're in the right place. Okay, the swinging lower leg. You know, it's one of those things that sometimes the more you focus on it, trying to secure it or trying to stop it swinging around, it can actually feel like it's getting worse. (laughs) And there's a lot of reasons that happens, Um, but I do think it is something that you can fix, okay? It's something that you can straighten out and you can correct. And today I want to just go through a few kind of practical tips that you can use and you can check off and work on with your horse when you're in the arena to help you secure that lower leg if it is swinging around and moving all about the place. So first and foremost is going to be to check the length of your stirrups. Now, I often find that riders who are struggling with this swing and lower leg are also riding with their stirrups maybe slightly too long for their abilities at that point in time. And I say this because very often as riders when we start out, you know, there's other riders that we want to emulate and we think like, wow, like they're an amazing rider and I really want to be like them. So we start kind of tweaking and changing things to try and be more like them. But what's important to remember in that situation is that rider has probably been practicing a lot longer than you and has probably been riding a lot longer than you and therefore is probably able to do things a little bit better than what you're able to do them right now, okay? And what can happen is by you lengthening your stirrup to maybe resemble their leg, okay, so what their leg is doing, you're also taking away your security okay so you have to give it time to develop and to build your aids and having your stirrups slightly shorter initially really and truly can help you to develop your independent aids a little bit more okay when you're a little bit earlier on on your journey okay so have a look at that have a look at the stirrup length if it is too long put it up a hole or two there's no shame in that okay and what you also might notice is how At the beginning of the ride, your leg is okay, but then kind of halfway through the ride, like let's say you're 25 minutes in and your leg is just moving all about the place. That's very often to do with physical fitness. It's just you're getting tired. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. But what you can do in those situations is maybe shorten the stirrup a hole there. Okay. Now, I don't want you riding around with your stirrups too short. Okay. This is all within reason. If you already have really short stirrups, but your leg is still swinging about, that's a different kettle of fish. I'm just saying check the length of the stirrups. and That can often help you um, to get it right a little bit later. Okay. The next thing to check is that your horse is actually moving forwards. Okay. If your horse is having to be kicked and shoved and pushed forward every single stride, well, first of all, it is exhausting. But secondly, it is also going to really negatively impact your position and your posture over time. Okay. And well, also the coordination and the timing of your aids, like really hard to coordinate anything if you have to constantly keep kicking the horse forward. Okay. So I want you to focus and make sure that your horse is actually working forwards on his own, that he's not having to be coaxed or kind of encouraged forward every single stride. Okay. He has to be forward going. He has to be forward thinking. He has to be forward moving. And then from there, you can then begin to focus on you a little bit. Now, if your horse is maybe less than forward, you need to start working on responsiveness first. And you can do that on the ground. You can do it lunging. There's lots of ways you can do and work on improving responsiveness. Obviously, you can do it when you're riding as well. But it is really, really important because if you can think about 
kind of freeing up your lower leg from its current job of constantly kicking the horse, kicking the horse, kicking the horse, kicking the horse, or squeezing, 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 to actually, hold on, now I can begin to ask different questions other than just hit the go button all the time. We can start to work and to ask other questions and it's going to really and truly improve that for you, okay? My third kind of port of call, if you've gone through the first two and you're like, nope, doesn't apply, okay? Or, yep, fix that, okay, would be your overall position. And, you know, a very simple question to ask yourself would be, am I sitting on my bum? (laughs) You know, it's not rocket science, hey? But so many riders are not. So you have a lot of riders who have pitched forward slightly and they're almost like sitting on the insides of their thighs, okay? And in doing so, their knees are normally a little bit squeezed on. And what you find then is the lower leg will naturally swing, okay? And similarly, if you're sitting maybe on the back of your seat, so you're sitting, your bum is almost like tucked in underneath you, okay? That is going to cause your lower leg to swing forward. And again, it's going to cause it to swing and kind of move about. You want to keep your leg under you, okay, all times, like right underneath you. Like if we bump major horse vanish, you would land on your two feet, okay? It must be under you. And what's important is that When it is here, you want to then channel the weight into your heel, okay? So a lot of riders, they are not keeping their heels down when they ride. And, you know, to the absolute frustration of riding instructors all over the globe. And many feel if they could just make some sort of an audio that is continuously played, heels down heels down. Remember, are your heels down? Okay, it would help things. But yeah, make sure that your weight is dropped into the heel. That's going to go a long way to securing that lower leg. Okay, next point is drape and don't grip your legs. So your legs are not there to keep you on, okay? You have to use your balance to keep you on and and not gripping through your legs, okay? The irony of this is for many riders, they grip their legs to try and stop the leg from swinging about, okay? They're like, oh, you know, stay still. But when you're doing that, you're actually usually making the swinging lower leg even worse, okay? And especially if you're squeezing with your knees, okay? Don't squeeze with the knees, okay? Make sure that you focus on that. But rather think about your legs being like a channel and directing the energy. And think about being able to feel the contact with your horse's side or with the saddle down the full length of your leg rather than just focusing on the knees okay you want to be able to kind of have your leg there loose and supple especially through the ankles and the knees so that you can apply your aids when you need to when you're gripping all the time it's very difficult for the horse to understand what you're saying (laughs) because it sounds like you're just saying go all the time, okay? And very often the horse will just begin to ignore you because you say, well, she can't make up her mind. I don't know what she wants. She clearly doesn't know what she wants either. So you know what? I'll rather do nothing, okay? So it's really important you're not doing that. Okay, the fifth thing that you can look into to improve a swinging lower leg is your rider fitness. Okay, so how fit are you? And also, how much are you practicing and how well are you practicing as well, okay? I think that it's really, really important to understand that you need to have a certain level of fitness in order to improve as a rider, okay? And for many riders, the challenge can often be that they've stopped riding for a while. Now, whether it's kind of two weeks, two months, two years, you're going to, or 22 years even, you are going to notice the difference when you get back. And that can be quite frustrating because there may be things that you were able to do and now you're no longer able to do and you're like, oh, I can't control this anymore. What is going on? But it is important to understand that you change, your body changes, and also that the more physically tired you get while riding, well, the greater the chances are that your leg is going to swing, okay? So what I would focus on here, if this is the case with you and physical fitness is a bit of a challenge, really get specific about what you want to do in each ride and try and keep the ride slightly smaller or shorter, but that it's kind of quality over quantity, if that makes sense, okay? It'll help you to um, get a little bit more specific in what you're working on, but it will also then help you to 
maybe get out of a habit if it is a habit of swinging that lower leg to change that or to remove that to get out of that as well okay i also think like finding some sort of a complementary fitness activity is really important talk about it all the time i love hiking and cycling but whatever floats your boat you can do that and um, i think that it'll help to increase your stamina but also it almost like helps us to gain a little bit more control over our body as well which is really really important okay so the final thing that i think is a really good way of improving a swinging lower leg securing it stopping it is to practice in the light seat um, and the light seat can feel uncomfortable initially that's fine but your light seat or your two-point seat is really and truly going to put all of the things that we've spoken above okay going to put it all into action and what it'll do is it'll help keep your leg underneath you it'll make sure that you're not gripping with the knee it'll make sure that your stirrup is short enough okay it will also help to improve your physical fitness it'll make sure your heel is down it does all of the things okay so it's a really good way of putting everything into practice and um, now i do think that your light seat needs to be correct in order for it to be effective i have a podcast episode on the light seat and how to do it correctly and um, that you can find over the show notes for this episode which is over at stridesforsuccess.com forward slash episode 1272 but you can find that there but there's also the equestrian fitness challenge that you can sign up for as well and that's just equestrian fitness challenge Dot com that you can join as well and get it there but i do think that the light seat is one of the best ways to secure the lower leg so if it is something you're struggling with that's what i'm going to suggest you do okay i'm going to leave it at that for today once again you can get the equestrian fitness challenge over at equestrianfitnesschallenge.com couldn't be easier okay i'm going to leave it at that have a great one keep well not chat to you soon be good bye